Well, thank you so much, Jason. Thank you for joining me today. I'm really excited to talk to you about the exhibition, to hear about your process, to talk to you about what visitors can expect in the exhibition. Yeah. So do you want to give us a little bit of an intro into what people can expect? Yeah, um, well, excited to be here, excited to uh, have this exhibition coming to fruition. Um, I've been working on it for almost two years now. Um, as you know, the process has been uh, both rewarding and challenging at times. Um, but it's really great to see this body of work come to fruition, no, no place other than Pam. Um, the works that, that the viewers will be um, enjoying in the exhibition are six, seven paintings, um, two triptychs, which are um, a set of three concrete paintings, and uh, this large canvas that we see behind us <laughs> will be installed. Um, but yeah, it's, it'll be mainly painting show, but with some site-specific elements to it. Um, and yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I'm most excited about is for people to see the difference in the way that you work, right? So we yeah. mentioned the canvas that's behind us, and I definitely want you to dive into that. But can you talk to us a little bit about why you work in both canvas and concrete and what the challenges are with each one? Yeah, I, my practice has been uh, mainly in painting for s several years now, but I've always tried to kind of the idea of material and, and what painting is, kind of explore that, whether I'm working on canvas or concrete or on a 3D surface, um, always having somewhat of a sculptural approach to painting, again, whether that's on canvas or concrete. Um, for these paintings specifically, I wanted to, to include both of them because they have become a, a large part of, of my practice. The concrete work specifically are, are inspired by my travels, um, both in, in in my work and, and in my background, um, places like Syria and Cuba, mm -hmm. both countries um, who history kind of lies in, 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 the, the, in the walls and, and kind of whenever I'm visiting a place like this, I'm always like, oh, I, you see the, the natural kind of uh, abstraction that happens with some of these walls and the years of, of different paint layers peeling off or whether it's graffiti or, or anything like this, it, I always found that so interesting. So for these concrete works, I quite frankly wanted to use that as the underpainting for them, right? I wanted to be able to cut out one of these pieces of wall right. and, and bring my work to fruition on that. Um, so that's, that was a large part of um, this exhibition. So you're playing with like the degradation that happens naturally and yeah. leaving it to chance a little bit, but you still have some semblance of control. 100%. I mean, it's there is this kind of juxtaposition that happens when you're working on a surface that's so unforgiving and porous and yeah. kind of difficult to to render on like concrete, um, especially when you're working with a art form that's similar to this type of ornamentation that's very kind of intricate and fine. I, I loved that um, juxtaposition again of this like very ornate kind of detailed artwork on this kind of rugged mm, Degraded, or, uh, yeah. sorry, uh, degraded, degraded, difficult, yeah. rough kind of surface. Surface, yeah. exactly. Um, and then the canvas works are a different being in themselves because I can be a lot more precise on them. I can be, they feel a little bit more inviting. They're, they're a lot smoother to the surface. Um, the way that paint is absorbed on canvas is different from concrete. So even if I'm using similar colors, there will be a natural kind of difference in hue and, and texture that happens within the two works, um, more specifically the canvas painting that we'll be exhibiting in the, uh, in the show is actually a, a combination of these two concrete triptychs together in one. And, and I wanted that to be on canvas so that the actual works can, the design of the works can be the highlight of them and, and, right. and the, the actual material can, can come second, which sometimes with the concrete works is, is reversed. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I think that, that that comparison or having them both in conversation in the room speaks to the way that you were able to kind of evolve within your practice, right? Because the way that you have described it to me in the past, which I think is, is really great and how I was able to visualize it, is imagine yeah. drawing a straight line on canvas versus on concrete or on the sidewalk, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's really hard. So I think that the way that the exhibition is, is put together is to highlight what your process has evolved to, and of course that plays with the title. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about your background? You mentioned it briefly, right? So you've, yeah. you've done a lot of traveling and you feel like your heritage and your background is embedded into the paintings. Can you talk to us about maybe where that idea came from and how important that is to you overall? Yeah, I think 
obviously growing up in Miami, um, born and raised here, I, you're kind of always surrounded by, by different cultures. Um, so you don't think too much about what being from a certain place or, or your parents being from a certain place means um, until you kind of get out of Miami and you realize that that's, that's kind of a unique upbringing that yeah. happens here and in, in other you know, large cities, but are not necessarily um, the same experiences all over the US or whatnot. So growing up with these two heritages, again, you know, Arab and Hispanic or Cuban and Syrian, um, two countries that have dealt with uh, very rough, you know, past 50 years yeah. uh, within civil wars and, and um, sanctions and things like that. And I feel like sometimes when you when you talk or when you hear about these countries, like pre a certain af a certain political aspect, they're always almost utopian, right? Like this was the, the oh, this was so perfect. And sometimes it's it's a little bit more right. um, abstract or or, yeah. or um, romanticized. Yeah, romanticized yeah. than it really <laughs> is. But but there also is you know some truth in that. And growing up in Miami, obviously the the Hispanic side or the Cuban side was always felt very fulfilled because I had several friends that right. were were Cuban and or. Central American, South American, Caribbean anyway, where I, I felt like that kind of side of, of my heritage was um, somewhat explored. Uh, but the, the, you know, the Arab side wasn't something that I got to explore deeper until I started traveling and, and, and making work that was um, inspired by that kind of growing up with specific carpets and stuff in, in my home. There was always something that I was intrigued by and, and I always kind of looked to draw, um, but I didn't fully understand what the meaning behind specific carpets was, why someone who's informed on, right. uh, on this type of artwork can see a carpet and say, this is an Isfahan rug from the 1800s, this is silk, and, this, and be able to kind of read this hieroglyph. I found that to be really interesting because they're not just aesthetically pleasing, but there is a conceptual meaning behind certain aspects and ornaments that are used in these, um, what I like to refer to them as artworks, right? Um, so as I started exploring that further, again, the first works that I started doing were very derivative of existing carpets or carpets that I owned. Um, but I wanted to kind of explore a bit deeper on, on how I can create these designs and make them my own. So that's when I started traveling and, and I mm -hmm. spent time in, in, in Iran and studying under actual carpet weavers and carpet designers. I spent time in Syria and Morocco and Istanbul, all these places where this art form really flourishes and um, just fully understanding how it's made so that I can then bend and break and, and kind of take some of these um, starting points and, and make them my own and, and ideally make them exciting for newer generations. Yeah. Or, uh, when you're working based on an art form that's been around for so long, there's, there's a positive and a negative in that. The positive is that it is proven that people care about this. Right. The negative is it's been seen so many times, what can I add to it? Or what can, mm -hmm. what can I make a change in that? Um, so that's been my kind of exploration over the last few years. And I think specifically in this exhibition, you're seeing two different routes of, of yeah. that exploration. Number one with the concrete works, number two with this canvas work that is a you know kaleidoscope of two designs yeah. merged together. Um, it's the first time I've ever done something like this, but it, it, uh, it, it really pushes the envelope of how far can I get from that initial design while still right. having it feel um, inspired by that, right? Yeah, and this is the largest work you've made, This right? is the largest piece I've ever done, yes. That's amazing. Uh, it, well, we it, get to brag about that, which is exciting. Yeah. I'm now, let me, let me ask you, we've talked a little bit about the difference between the concrete and the canvas, right? But one of the things that I find really fascinating about your work is when and where you use the kind of technological processes yeah. and when the artist's hand becomes present. Can you talk to us about what that process sure. looks like for you? I'm, I'm glad we're having this conversation because I feel like sometimes it, it gets lost in, in translation when people think, when people read the word digital, they just assume that we're dealing with print, right? Or, right. or, or something technical. But that's not the case here. My, my practice is starts digitally, and, mm -hmm. and, and that goes back to referencing what I mentioned before. Is one of the things I learned when I was you know, studying this, um, this type of art making is that before a, a carpet is made, the, the carpet designer will, re, will create something called a carpet map, which that's a quarter of the design, right? And normally, um, in the world of carpet making, that would be done in a type of graph paper where each square would be uh, signifying how many uh, knots per square inch, right? So that would be something for the carpet designer to let the carpet weaver know that, hey, in this square, we're putting 100 you know, knots yeah. of this color. For me, my practice, what I do differently is I, I start very similarly with that kind of quarter design or what we refer to as a carpet map, but I'm doing this cleanly on uh, an iPad or on Photoshop, on Illustrator. I'm creating mm -hmm. these outline designs, which we're seeing um, in the exhibition space on, yeah. on the walls. 
Um, but that process starts off digitally so that I can then recreate this on canvas or on concrete. The reason why I start digitally is because since there's so much going on in these designs, and especially on, on a surface like concrete, I have to have a clear idea of what I'm going to be doing before I'm actually starting on that concrete. So right. that whole process is very much pre-calculated, whether that's where the outline design is being shown in some of these concrete pieces or where this um, kind of decay or, or pulled apart version portions of the concrete are happening, that's all predetermined digitally. Right. So I'm, I'm taking that outline design, I'm laying it over a 60 by 40 inch um, rectangle on Photoshop. I'm using certain shapes to cut out certain aspects of it. I'm coloring in certain aspects of it. And I'm having a, a very solid idea uh, or reference of what I'm going to paint before I do that. Now that's all right. done pre so that when I get on the, on the painting aspect of it, um, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Right. Um, so the process is very much hand in hand with digital and um, analog. But for me, the approach is always, how can I use technology to push my craft somewhere further where I can't by hand, right? Instead of just, how can I cut corners or how can I make it easier? How can I mass produce something? Um, how can I use this to be able to uh, just be more precise or, or be able to experiment in ideas um, before actually pouring a slab of concrete and, and right. freestyling on, on that? Um, right, absolutely. Yeah. And, and this question probably pertains more to the concrete, but you mentioned that the areas where we see more of that degradation, all of that is pre-planned, predetermined, right? Yeah. That's part of the design. So what elements of your practice when you're working on the concrete is left up to chance? So that's a great question. I mean, there's, there's no matter how pre-calculated I want to be, there's always um, aspects that- Something goes that, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, then something goes wrong and then sometimes something goes right in a way that you didn't think it would have. Right. Um, and it's kind of just like, working with that the the slab of concrete is all done you know in studio this isn't i'm not working off of pre-existing slabs um that pour happens in studio and, and even though I, I can calculate where i'm supposed to pull these shapes out of or or these kind of dips in the, in the actual surface that's always up to chance on on how much is going to come out when i peel that out and what that's going to look like when the concrete cures the concrete itself cures a white color um, the staining and the dyeing that happens after and, and that okay. I'm spraying onto the surface, I'm rubbing into it, that aspect is completely up to chance because right. there's no way for me to calculate where a certain spray, like how dense right. the, the color is going to be on that, which I, I, I love that aspect because it's very similar to just traditional underpainting that you would do for an oil painting or something, right? And those aspects also um, inform the way that the color will look on top of it. For instance, if if a portion or, uh, of the concrete is stained slightly darker, a more transparent light blue would look very different on that portion of the concrete right. as opposed to how it would look on one where the more natural white is being shown. So no matter how precise or, or how calculated I, I want to be, there's always uh, certain aspects that are left up to chance, but I feel like that's what also makes them feel organic, right? When you look right. at the surface, you don't necessarily know that, right off the bat that this was happening by, um, pre-calculated, right? It, mm -hmm. it does look like if it just kind of naturally, a lot of times people will be like, well, did you paint it and then sand off the color? Or that that kind of aspect is still um, something that isn't necessarily informed right away when you see the piece. So, so based on that, now that you're creating these two triptychs, did you yeah. find that element to be a challenge because of the fact that you're creating the same work, but in three different parts? Did you find that that added some challenge to it or, or did you feel that that was exciting and was it kind of easier for you actually yeah. to show the process like what was that like because i don't know if if the triptych is something yeah. that was easier or harder for you this this time around yeah I've, I've never done something like this before i've never shown a a painting in in different stages or worked off the same design in in a couple different um outputs so it, it was it was unique it the i would say the most challenging aspect was just trying to reference how I painted the previous portions because I wasn't necessarily um, working on the same painting start to finish. I'd work on one and then I'd, I'd hop to another one or I'd work on the canvas. And I usually do this normally in my practice so that mm -hmm. I don't get too burnt out on, right. on one image. Um, so again, even though and this kind of goes back to what we talked about before, even though I try to be very calculated, the way that I mix color and, and, and the way that I use color once I'm actually on the painting portion, that's always up to just what I'm using on my palette that day. I don't necessarily record. I mixed 
you know, two parts ultra, <laughs> ultramarine blue and, and this part, I'm not that calculated with it. Um, so I think maybe what, one of the, the, the struggles was trying to, to mimic what I had done before, which is not something that I've, that I've experienced had to before. Do. Right. Yeah. Um, the second aspect of that was, which was interesting to see was just like how I would get better through the pieces. So the first time I was the first stage of, of, of one triptych, it, it, it's going to look very different from the third one, because at that point, I, this is my third time doing it. Um, so I kind of had learned what works and what doesn't work or, Did you or go which back outlines at any are necessary. I did, but I tried not to. I, I wanted for, for the first stage and the second stage to have a different feel. I wanted them to feel a little bit looser, the outlines a bit, uh, a bit different, the amount of aspects within the ornamentation that are outlined are different. So there is little nuance within them, so they yeah. don't feel too much like this is the same painting in, in, in three stages, right. and just more deleted in, from one to the other. There is different aspects happening within the painting itself. Um, which and speaks to the practice. I mean, that's yeah, really what you want it, people to see, right? It's it's important for people to understand that this is still handmade, right? This right. is still being funneled by human exactly. beings. So no matter how calculated I am, or no matter how pre you know um, uh, pre designed the the aspects are, there's still a human hand that's that's right. outputting this. So there's always going to be differences in them, um, which I. I it took me a while to accept that or like lean into that, that you're but human. that's quite frankly, <laughs> no, like, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's, and, and maybe it comes down to that, like first generation immigrant mentality where like for something to be good, it has to be difficult. And, and, and that means and that, that something is worth yeah. it. Yeah. Um, kind of growing up, you know, my mom was always uh, super supportive of my work, but she was the first one to like, be like, okay, that's good. But why, why does a person, I cross, you know, like, <laughs> why is the nose bigger on this? Like, she would always have a comment and I found it so frustrating, but I would always make the change and then it would look better. Yeah. And it's Hispanic funny moms. because, yeah, Hispanic she still will try to find it now yeah. in, in my work, but she's kind of, she's, she's, she's now she's just on her, um, uh, she's taking credit for it now. She's, she's yeah, less judgmental. Of course. Or so. of course. Um, sorry, mom. But uh, <laughs> yeah, she's, she's, she's great. But it, I think that kind of growing up in, in that, type of household where maybe second place wasn't necessarily good enough. It, it, it yeah. definitely informs the way that I paint. And I think there's there's benefits and there's negatives to that. Um, but it it's something that I really got to explore within this exhibition. And a large part of the, the inspiration be, behind showing the, the stages of, of the work, you know, title removed, is the fact that sometimes I'll have a studio visit and someone will come, you know, while I'm, I'm in the middle of, 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 of a painting and they'll be like, wow, it's just perfect like this or leave it like that. And you're forced to kind of look back and be like, oh, it does look interesting this way. But what I had in mind for it was so different that it's right. hard for me to see it from that lens. So with this, you know, with this exploration, I was forced to kind of see three different finished paintings in right. three different stages, um, which I think is really exciting because I won't say which ones, but there are some that maybe the, the first stage is my favorite or the second stage is the favorite, yeah. as opposed to what I would normally do, which is closer to what you see in the third stage of that triptych. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the exhibition really reflects, obviously, your practice, your process, but also what we're doing with the installation, I think, is really special, right? Yeah. This is not just um, paintings on the wall for people to look at from a distance and also from up close. It's really... I almost feel like it's a secular chapel in a way. Yeah. It feels like a room where you can contemplate. It feels like a room where you can kind of self-reflect. It feels sure. incredibly peaceful. Can you talk to us a little bit about what the overall installation is going to look like and, and what visitors can expect in this yeah. you know, installation? Yeah, I mean, I think you brought up some great points and, and, and I love the way that you worded it because I feel like the work for me um, is always very therapeutic. and. So sometimes like people see the, the amount of detail and they must like, oh, you must be so patient or, or you must be such a, a Zen person or this and that. And <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm really not. I, but for this type of work, I do have that. And, and when I'm painting, I've realized that the best painting or, or, or the, the more precise I can be is the more kind of out of body I try to get in the work, right? So the more mind removed, whether I'm listening to audiobooks or I'm listening to um, podcasts, or, or anything of, of the sort, I, once my mind is somewhere else and I'm kind of just letting that happen almost rhythmically, right. that's when I can be more uh, precise in my work as opposed to when I'm very very focused in like making a specific line perfect, I'm overthinking it. Um, 
So anyway, I say all that to say this is that my practice while I'm making this works is I try to get to that kind of um, uh, spiritual uh, yeah, place, kind if, of peaceful, if it makes sense. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I really wanted for the finished versions of these works to be enjoyed in that similar sentiment and, and getting inspiration from from mosques and places that I've traveled, you know, all over the world and, and even more so here in the States, uh, for instance, like the Rothfeld Chapel in Houston. I think that these are really important places where it allows the art to reach us in, in a way that necessarily traditional galleries um, don't don't kind of uh, foster it. So when I saw the space that we were showing it, I mean, right away I was inspired by it. So I really wanted to create something that was specific for that space. So I, I, I hope that the viewers having that similar kind of feeling when they when they walk in and, and they see these large paintings that they're kind of um, uh, surrounded by. I, we also did some really cool stuff with um, the framing on the works uh, because my process again is so much digitally and analog. Um, we can talk about that, uh, but yeah, I think ideally people will, will have that kind of feeling. Um, that was that was my intent in, in trying to kind of have the viewer come into my studio um, in this, but have them more so enter kind of my headspace while I'm creating right. these works. And, and right. I do actually want you to talk about that. I want you to talk about the, the framing that we're going to yeah. see on the triptychs and the wallpaper, yeah. because they do add a kind of site specificity to the installation. And they play with the concrete walls, right? Yeah. Pam is kind of known for having these like yeah. beautiful gray concrete walls. We wanted to play with that, reference the work, but also highlight them. So yeah, the framing and the wallpaper, how does that play into the install? Well, firstly, the, the concrete in, in the walls was very inspirational for me because normally I'm, I'm using kind of more orange, tans, red tones that are kind of more similar to what you would see um, in uh, Middle Eastern walls, right? Because yeah. the, the crushed red brick and certain aspects that they're using um, are from their found environment. So the, the natural kind of colors that would happen in that staining portion of the uh, concrete process was slightly different. So for this, I wanted to use something that was more reflective of the actual walls that are right. so beautiful in the space, which are actually more of a traditional gray, um, off-white kind of concrete color. So that's that was something that, that informed the way that I stained the, the underpaintings of the concrete mm -hmm. paintings. Um, but the actual installation itself is, again, kind of coming to fruition, right? Showing the process, showing my thoughts throughout this and, and, and how I approach a painting or making it work. Um, before I create these paintings, I do this outline design. So that outline design is being shown, you know, behind certain walls and really emphasizing um, the process. Because I think a lot right. of times when people see the work, they're like, oh, is this, is this a design that you made? Is it based off of an existing piece or, or mm -hmm. whatnot? But these designs are completely my own. Um, so I wanted to highlight that. I wanted to kind of show the way that, that this all starts, which is with that black and white outline design. In this case, we, we chose some different colors that, that felt more suitable to, to this overall feeling of, of um, right. uh, tranquility and, and kind of um, enjoying the, the actual installation as a whole. Um, the next aspect is this, uh, are the kind of, um, which referring to them as framings, because they are framings, but they're they're actually relief sculptures within themselves, right. right? So again, exploring the idea of digital and analog, taking that outline design, the same one that's being shown, you know, on, on the museum walls, working that in 3D and creating these 3D relief sculptures from those outline designs allows, um, allows me to bring the work to a new dimension that I've never done before, which is really kind of showcasing the depth of these ornamentations or, or these um, forms that, that are created within the works. So, so the actual um, you know, frames for these concrete pieces are from a CNC cut uh, shape of this. So the, yeah. the process of that, it looks in, in the final form, it looks very much like a, a, an ornate frame, right? But the, the approach to it is so, you know, uh, 21st century in the right. sense that it's a it's a 3D model that's then being cut by this you know insane machine and and those slabs are are kind of put together and then painted and finished to to look this certain way so again that process of of hand to digital then back to hand um, is something that I'm always kind of excited about in exploring and and this is the first time I've ever done something like this or at this scale. So it's, yeah. it's really, I'm really excited about showing that and, and kind of showing these different dimensions of the work yeah. within the space. So the frame and the wallpaper emphasize more of the, the design, the kind of yeah. first step. Exactly. I, I think that before anything happens, that's what starts, right? So right. before we, you know, before I'm, I'm, I'm starting a concrete slab, before I'm unrolling a piece of canvas, like there's 
all this work that already went into just designing what I'm going to paint, which when people ask sometimes like, how long does a painting take? It's tough, right? Because a painting, you know, a painting like this can take, you know, six months or, or a painting mm -hmm. on concrete can take two months, but that's not counting, you know, that design aspect that happens beforehand, which is a few months on its own. So it's definitely a labor of love, but um, I'm really excited about yeah. it. Yeah. Is it fair to say that then the exhibition does touch on almost every kind of portion of your process? Yes. Yeah, I think it. that was the goal, right? The yeah. goal was to, to try to highlight as much as possible without overdoing it, right? Without with still being tasteful and still doing it in a way that is designed for this space. Because we had this unique um, chance, which is where we kind of were aware of where the, the exhibition would happen before we were even sure it was going to happen, right? Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> the way that my mind works is I'm, I'm always kind of thinking and, and, and designing in my head. So I was already kind of putting together how I wanted this to look before I even started understanding what the paintings would look like. Um, so I think that that hopefully reflects a lot in the way that the, the show is hung and, and the way that people who come see it are, are able to kind of digest the whole body of work. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't thank you enough for I mean, sitting down with the, me today and for doing all this beautiful work for sure. you know all of our PAM visitors to enjoy. So the coming to fruition, mine. coming soon. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for the you. opportunity. I'm, I'm so excited. Much I hope appreciated. That everyone enjoys it.